There we go. Oh, I see it. Yeah. Okay, cool. So, first, I wanted to say thank you so much for joining us. I'm really excited to have you on here. So, your channel is one of my favorites. I'm always looking forward to your new stuff. So, I was really excited when Buddha told me that he reached out to you and that you agreed to be on. So, thanks a lot for joining us. Thank you for reaching out, too. Oh, yeah, man. It's all good. All right, cool. So, so um, first, if you wanted to, I mean, I think uh, everyone who watches my show probably already knows about your channel. But if you wanted just for anyone who might not be aware, uh, maybe tell us a little bit about you and what you do over on your channel. All right, well, um, basically my my channel, how I see it, is uh, just me sharing my perspectives and reflections on uh, how I view society and um, a lot of focusing on a lot of the, the mind control programs that keep us away from really kind of owning and inhabiting our own power. Uh, that's kind of like the very general overview of um, how I see it. I mean, but, and and how I, my approach is from an artistic kind of like spoken word in its own way and um, interpretive kind of language to where since everything that I've experienced has affected me in some kind of way. Um, a lot of the ways that most people learn is from like looking inward. And once you start looking how, uh, looking at yourself and how things affect you, you can see how things start to affect other people, how things affect your family, how things affect your friends. And if you keep going how things affect society and then once you get to start to look at things like that, or at least for me personally, I started to see um, <clears throat> the the algorithms of how systems are designed to make us, instead of expand our consciousness, instead implode it. Because if you have people who are just chaotic and not knowing who they are, not really um, having any kind of root structure, um, they're easy to control, easy to manipulate, and um, you can make a profit off of ignorance, whereas you can't make a profit off of powerful people. So I try to take a lot of the perspectives that I've seen throughout my life um, and how, how through those perspectives, how they, how the system has designed an implosion device in every single aspect of this mainstream reality. And if I could see that and understand that, and I could explain that to friends and family members, then uh, it was just a challenge for me to try to figure out how I could explain that to complete strangers, you know, people who don't know me at all or you know, and, and knowing and using this platform, knowing when you talk about this information, this kind of information from the extremes, from just like, you know, what is truth? What is, what are, what are these, these deceptions? Like, what are these false flags? What is, what is going on with uh, like our cosmology? What, what's going on with a lot of the race agendas and the, the control mechanisms? Like, how does this stuff work? How does it affect us? And, um, start to kind of like crack the door open into what we could start to do individually and collectively to start to uh, let go of a lot of the, the the density and a lot of the, the programs that sometimes we don't even know are there. And I know when I was <clears throat> first starting to look into a lot of information online and read books and listen to people, um, I, I, I started to realize I was getting a lot of help from just listening to other people's experiences 
and their perspectives and a lot of things started to unlock in my world just from you know seeing how other people let go of stuff or unlock things and once i realized that that was a possibility and it felt good to have that happen uh, with friends and family then um it's kind of just like it, it became uh, an art and like an, an interpretive art for me to where um it's meaningful so if I could share something meaningful with people, knowing that some people are just going to totally hate it and some people are going to look the other way, so what? It doesn't really matter. I mean, it's existing to exist, and um, we all have a meaning and a purpose, and uh, the Subtle Infinity channel is just basically trying to share like how I perceive my reality, and um, it started out with no subscribers, and then um realizing that okay well if one or two people can get something cool or positive out of this then that's all that really needs to be so once i started there and not really having any attachments to it to where like any expectations or anything like that then um, the information started to flow more freely and over the last like i think i started making videos in 2013 so over the last like five years it just kind of developed into what it is now to where I interpret a lot of the the information that is pumped out by the mainstream media conspiracy theories um, flat earth information uh, university systems the control grid and anything else that seems interesting and related to the whole network of information that uh, I've come to investigate and then eventually kind of clear out of my reality or or evolve the, the the perspective to where some of these things are designed to weigh down on you but if you reprogram them through your own perspectives then you can not only like release that that like you can counteract that energy that is designed to work against you so you can release that energy but also um use that energy to help uh, other people and yourself also explain or see things from different perspectives. So once I realized that that was a possibility uh, on YouTube and pretty much just YouTube is just one version of it. I mean, everybody does it in their own way every day in life, um, but to, to do it on YouTube is a, di a different thing. So that's what I've been <clears throat> that's what I've been doing for the last like five years and yeah I mean without getting into in, into many of the details of the channel uh, that's pretty much how I see what's going on in a nutshell <laughs> well it's opened my eyes up to a lot of different perspectives it kind of helped me put some things in context some of the things that you discuss on your channel um you know ask different questions than i was already asking in my journey because some of the questions i was asking were kind of you know sending me in a circular kind of search and i guess some of the more um inward looking that you do on your channel help me kind of expand my research. So I'm really grateful for that. So. Yeah, I was actually just gonna ask too, like, um, can you maybe um, ex like give an example of how you sort of did this, um, you know, spiritual Aikido thing where you take in something that should be holding you down and you've used that. And maybe also, can you say like how you figured out how to do that? Um, I don't, I don't, I think it's kind of like it, it happened over a, a span of a, a few years. Um, but I guess very generally, uh, an easy way. Well, okay. Well, shifting from 
starting to ask questions about my reality. I guess when it, that's when it all started. It was just like, all right, well, when I was going to school in uh, the Bay Area, I got out of the Army, and then I was going to the use, um, the Cal State system, and I was an English major. And that's when I started to, you know, ask questions about, like, what I want to do with my life. Like, what's my life about? Like, what is this? And it was dealing with art. And as an English major, my my writing style was my art. So when I went there, it was kind of like, all right, well, they're trying to tell me how to be and how to, you know, do this. And that's that was kind of like my – actually, it wasn't my first – realization of how we're locked down that actually the first observation of how systems are used to lock us down was when I went into the military right out of high school I started to see how the system was designed to make you think and act a certain way and then eventually you become this entirely different person which is not really a, a person you're a robot you're a some kind of technical thing that is just supposed to operate in this way and then once I started to look at society the same way as the military affects people that's when I started to see the programming a little more uh, it was more clear so it happened it was obvious in the military then I started to see it in the university system and then when I got out of the university system, I jumped straight into the Occupy movement. And that that's where I was protesting. And then that's when I started to realize, all right, well, at that time frame, I was literally like yelling at the banks. And then I was like, is this, is this what's supposed to be going on? Like, is this what I'm really asking? What, what am I really asking about? So going through that process, through that experience of the military, then the, then the school, then the Occupy protest, it led me up to realize that I was going from breaking the physical warfare, which was literally the military, from the inside out, the mentality of like a soldier, you break that. I never fell for that. There, you, And you can, when I was in the military, I never fell for that. I just took like the discipline, all the stuff that's good, you know, that comes from there. It's not much, but there's something there. I took it and used that, but the rest was just supposed to break you down. That's what all basic training is about. So that's when I started to see like the math and the science, the algorithms of, you know, breaking an individual down rather than building somebody up. So that was when I started to realize the physical warfare I didn't realize the psychological warfare until um, I got into the last two years of college. And I was like, all right, well, this is how they control people. They make you think like this is how you're supposed to write. This is how you're supposed to think. This is how you're supposed to feel. Uh, and it wasn't just the English classes. It was everything. All the classes. Uh, they're designed to structure to create this uh, human-like being but it's a robot. It's a robot trying to be, you become it's a it's human trying to be a robot that's trying to be like a human. And there's an algorithm there. So when I jumped out of that, I jumped into the Occupy protest thinking that that was the answer. But then I, it, I just realized it was another algorithm. But this time the algorithm was more focused on the physical, uh, the psychological warfare, whereas the military breaks you down to literally go into the physical warfare. So once I started to break down the coding of the psychological warfare, how the the, the compartmentalizations of of all of them, then that's when I started to realize that oh well, all this is all falling underneath a spiritual warfare. And then that's when I opened up and it was like, well, what the hell is the spirit? What is a soul? What is it? You know, what is all this stuff? Because I always had a connection with some kind of most high energy, but I was never in involved in any religions, maintain anything like that. It was just, my family was never like that. My grandparents were like heavy in the, the Catholic church and um, the Christian church on my father's side. And 
Like it, it was just a whole thing that I was never really a part of. It was like a generation separated. But even then, I could still see how that affected people. But it really started by asking questions, like, you know, why is why why am I being trained to think this way? And then once you see like, once I started to see like how this stuff was really affecting, you know, not only me, but my friends, my family members, and everybody around me. Uh, it, it just made it easier. It, it makes it makes it easier to see. So once I got through realizing the physical, psychological, and started to open the doors of the, the spiritual warfare, then it made it easier to see how the stuff was attacking us. And then once you see the stuff that's attacking you, it's coming your way. It's there's a math, there's a science, there's an alchemy there. You just have to figure out the codes of how it works against you and then not allow it to affect you and not take it on, but, you know, flip it and uh, use it to explain how it's working rather than um, just kind of just pointing the finger at it. Pointing the finger at it is not really going to help. It'll help up to a point. That's kind of like what the psychological warfare does, like protesting. It's just a big finger pointing thing. But until you start to analyze what you're pointing the finger at and how it works, once you start doing that, that's what you, that's when you can start to um, kind of move that energy around. And that's when I started to ask myself, all right, well, how am I going to move this around? Like, what am I supposed to do with this? Because I've cleared a lot of that energy. I've known that through the military and through the Occupy, I bumped my head a whole bunch of times going through there. I see people bump their heads all the time. And if you just share what, what's going on then and how you've bumped your head, then you can help other people not bump their heads. And once you kind of turn that on internally, then it actually helps with, it helps with uh, being able to it helps with being able to, um, it's a language. It becomes a language, like a language of listening, a language of feeling, a language of uh, empathy and compassion. And it, it becomes a part of you. And then once it becomes a part of you, it, another way to explain it is kind of like how some people get, get into like the conspiracy bubbles and then a lot of that stuff just overtakes people's lives and people become angry and frustrated and I, I was like that like I was in that space so I realized that that was kind of productive after a while and once you get to that space then you can realize all right well what am I actually supposed to do with this like and then how can I do this and also help other people not be subjected to what I was just subjected to? And once that happens, it makes it easier to not, you know, fall subject to a lot of this stuff and then eventually just kind of break all these systems down um, one subject at a time, one equation at a time and do something with it rather than just talk about it or point point a finger at it so do you think that that's like because you said that you you know have an affinity for like english and communication so do you think that that's your personal journey as to how you're going to overcome it or do you think that applies to everyone do you think everyone should be communicating and everyone should be sharing do you think that was sort of your specific destiny as to how to fix the situation I think it was just more obvious for me because um, cause it's kind of like how artists can explain things that words can't really explain. So, because um, that's how I see myself as an artist. So, like, I think it was a little bit more, it was a little bit easier for me. And also where I grew up in my family, like, we've always asked questions. We've always... Um, had to like observe our reality and when you grow up and you don't have much like you have to be you have to have an imagination you have to have a sense of awareness that most people don't have who are in a comfort zone 
So you have to think outside of the box. You have to. So I, I was raised in that kind of environment. And actually, Oakland is known for being like that. That's where a lot of um, music and art and from all over the world, people kind of come and settle in that area. Um, so it was kind of always around me. So it was easier for me in a sense that, and I wouldn't use the term <laughs> easier because it, it, it's actually more challenging because you have to get through a lot of the stuff. But once you get through a lot of the stuff, then it eventually becomes easier. Um, but being an artist and then having the des like the desire to share like every artist wants to share then that that made it easier in a sense but in relation to other people it really breaks down to just language and you don't have to be an artist to speak language and be language because everybody in the, in it in themselves how i see it everybody is themselves a particular language like when you don't like to talk to somebody or you don't vibe with somebody you guys are speaking different languages it's kind of like a language of consciousness and basically everybody is their own language of the ultimate consciousness which is a, which is us experiencing this reality so once an individual starts to realize their own language, which is their own music, their own whatever it is, their own instrument, whatever it is, it doesn't have to be writing, it doesn't have to be um, even art. It's just like you, like who, what are you as a piece of art in this experience for however long you're gonna be alive uh, in this realm? Like, what is that? And then that's an actual universal language, which is just people speaking to each other and then like asking questions and being honest and with the reality. Whereas you can see the flip side is the system is designed to keep you from doing that. It's designed to keep you from uh, your own, your, your, the beauty of the diversity of this reality, the nature of who and what you are. Uh, so it waters everything down. So once people start to break that down, it's not really, based upon what uh, what you are, what you're doing artistically or your expression, it's really just about who you are and like, what is that? What's going on there? And then once people start like reading or uh, reading that book and speaking that language, then it makes it easier um, to start to figure out what's going on. Right. So where do you feel like you're at in your journey? Because like as a person who listens to you on a regular basis, I feel like you have so much figured out, but you make it clear that you're still like on a journey, you know? So what are like some of the questions that you still want answered? Okay. Yes. Um, I don't, I don't see myself as different from anybody else. Um, in relation to like journey, I don't really, I don't like, cause those are boxes that, and, and they're kind of like, they're, they're things that do more harm than they do any good in my opinion. So I kind of stay away from that, knowing that every morning that I wake up, there's something for me to do. And that's for anybody. Everybody does that. So the journey kind of resets itself every day for me, just like we reset ourselves every day. Uh, and we're still part of the book. You're still part of the past, the present and the future. But it's kind of like this never ending thing. And I've experienced from my own experience, leaving it like that, not having any expectations on it, not having any judgments or comparisons, because when we say, where where am I at on my journey? Use, a lot of the times it's, in order to even explain that, you have to put some kind of comparison, like, well, I'm here. And not necessarily, it doesn't have to be in reference to somebody else, but in reference to like me personally, like, 
I'm here now is where I am now different from where I was five and 10 years ago. Not really because I was doing exactly, I was doing the best that I could with who I was at that time. I'm doing the same thing right now. So I don't really see much of a difference uh, in that and leaving it in that space also leaves it kind of free to like not have any kind of judgments or comparisons for other people. Um, and how I've seen it when, when you are in that space and it makes it also easier for whatever it is that you're speaking on or whatever your art is to be received because people can feel that non-attachment there. there. There's like, like I have no expectations on you or anybody, just like everybody's cool. So I leave it, I leave it there and kind of just take it day by day. Uh, I forgot the other part of your question. What were you saying? Did I answer it? I, I think I missed a part. I feel like that was pretty good. <laughs> I mean, I just was kind of wondering, like, you know, like, what are some of the things you're still trying to piece together, I guess? Okay. Um, let's see. Well, I guess it's, it's kind of just getting, I just want to be, it's kind of like a, a musician or, um, like working out, like you, you want to become healthy. Like for me, I want to become healthy. And then when I get healthy, then I want to be better at what I'm doing. So it's like working out. So becoming physically healthy, psychologically healthy, spiritually healthy. And when you start getting into becoming spiritually, um, or at least questioning that, like, what is that? And then sh adjusting, adjusting that internally and externally and then helping other people. So I don't, I don't know. I don't really have too many things that, I just want to become, you know, better each day and become more refined and sharp and uh, help other people also do that because, you know, we're as it can't get better on your own if everybody else is still, you know, struggling or doing that. So that's like my main thing. That's what that's my main focus. So I don't really kind of personalize stuff like that I'm working on uh, as much anymore because a lot of what I'm working on is in relation to what you know everybody is working on the system the like how the system affects us and keeps us from working on that stuff um, yeah I just I just uh, want to get want to keep learning a lot of different things and get get better at whatever it is that interests me. Just play my music, be, become more um, versed. And uh, I'm working on becoming more fluid in my delivery and uh, ultimately saying, saying less, having to say less, but actually saying more. So that's something I'm working on personally, softening things up, not having to go really, um, like in comparison to some of my videos and earlier on this channel, like I was really engaged. There's a difference between uh, being like passionate and being like trapped in the emotional body. So earlier in my process, I was in, in the emotional body and you can still interpret a lot of information from that space, but there's stuff attached to it. So when once I shifted from there to passion, um, there was there was a, another there's something else there. Um, so it's kind of like I guess a better way to explain it or another way to explain it would be like dreams. Uh, every dream is another challenge. How I see it, once you get out of the fear body, kind of like I explained the emotional body in dreams, fear can snap you out of your dream um, because you haven't challenged yourself to face whatever was scaring you in your dream. 
once you break that break that kind of uh self-destructive um reaction then you can start getting into challenging yourself so now you're available you're not subjected to your emotional body and everything else that comes from those kind of like uh those those heavier energies you can get into a space of challenging yourself to get it get better at playing your music so just like you can challenge like getting out of the nightmare kind of realm in dreams then you get into the challenge space in dreams so like can you fly like can you fly in your dreams how can you become lucid can you pay attention can, how can you work in your dreams what am i learning what what am i teaching myself in my dreams what messages am i getting from um, whatever in my dreams what's going on here and that's a that's a challenge because you have to hold the space of the dream you have to hold the space of you uh also kind of like reflect on information but not be too linear because you in a dream space is kind of like all kinds of different versions of you and then when you're in that space in that challenge you can actually take some of that information from the dreams and then interpret it in in this place uh, so it's just getting like better at stuff like that getting better at listening um not speaking as much as um, I used to uh, not having to explain so much is another thing that I'm working on uh, more more kind of like detachment like it's it's like an engaged detachment is something else that I'm personally working on I've always been working on that that um, for a while it's like don't don't put something in the corner don't like forget about it no be actually in that space but in order to be deep in that space you have to have a certain level of detachment kind of like an, an understanding of this realm like the the life and the death you know this is an experience to be experienced and if you fall subject to the experience like if you fall subject to a dream like a nightmare dream then the dream will overtake your your dreams the world will overtake your dreams. So kind of not subjecting myself to that and not, not allowing people to uh, uh, affect me in ways to where they, 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 like the stuff that they're dealing with is projected onto me. Like being able to not, not be triggered or, or taken to that space. That's something I think we're always going to be working on, uh, but the more soft, softer be we become, the more powerful we become. It's kind of like how Bruce Lee was talking about water, um, flow like water, crash like water, just becoming more and more uh, engaged in that, in that challenge to become better at that. So th those are some of the things that I'm, I'm working on. There's, there's a lot more. I never really, Gonna put it to words for other people I have for myself, but uh, yeah, that's it's kind of so. Since you're kind of talking about that, uh, you know, like things that you're personally working on, I noticed you do talk, um, well, you cover anyway, um, like with the Nutricide videos and stuff. I I noticed that you talk about diet and I wonder if um, maybe do you have any thoughts because like I notice veganism vegetarianism it it goes around a lot like especially with the flat earth community it's discussed a lot and I wanted to know kind of like what your thoughts are on some of those diet trends Diet's or, another thing that I'm working on um, uh, I'm a vegetarian. I took some years. I know it's a process for it. Well, for me, it was a process. And I think that I've noticed for that's like to naturally kind of go through that process of not forcing oneself to act a certain I, I see a lot of that in the vegan communities and vegetarian communities, like 
kind of a lot of shame there and from i see where they're coming from rightfully in their perspective in in, in reference to like the the cruel animal cruelty and so on and so forth but there's so much involved with that relationship that we have to life and so on and so forth and i think a lot actually gets lost in those vegan communities when um it's just kind of just like oh you're just a you're just this or you're just that it's it's kind of weak when you come from that perspective of um oh yeah it's only about uh the animal uh, the animals in reference to the system like i think it's more powerful to come at it from the health perspective of like this is to start there not to take away from the, any of the animal perspectives but to actually go deeper into you know what that is so we can see a deeper relationship with these animals to start there and then start see right now a lot of the vegan communities and i think it's i think it's also part of the controlled opposition too because if you create weak positive movements kind of like the new age community then you're just setting people up you're you're setting up uh the opposition to the control grid to be empowering themselves with like weakness kind of like um like in a, a fake version of lifting weights like it, it, you're not really lifting like spiritual weights you're in, in reference to the difference between the physical the psychological and the spiritual la layers of consciousness how i see a lot of the mainstream vegan communities they're really only focusing on like the physical warfare version of that relationship that we have to animals and um society and so like everything and not really going into the psychological warfare or the spiritual warfare of this that's kind of like why i shy away from that also we have we have to realize that we're dealing with hundreds and hundreds of years of mind body and soul programming where it's not going to happen overnight and people have to naturally start to get get through these things and tr and start to figure it out because some people are going to shock some people can shock their bodies and actually do more harm by projecting themselves into something because of a belief system that is based upon just like i mean it's nothing i, I don't see it's, it's anything really wrong with like having this deep connection with the animals and then you just don't want to eat them and this and so on and so forth but the more than that there's like that's just one degree that's just one particular aspect of something that's a part of our entire lives our entire existence and that's what i want to help people start to realize to go deeper in that space and then and then work your way up to like undoing the process the, the the programming that involves like um, our relationship to food, our relationship to society, animals, and each other. Uh, because all of that, and kind of like the Nutri-Sci where Dr. Lila Africa was going into, he, he goes, he explains that a lot. It's, this is a, re a relationship with your food is like a, a relationship with the earth, the, the water, the land, your, your, um, your family, your loved ones, like everything. It's, it's this thing, it's a relationship. And a lot of these relationships that we have with modern society and are meant to be broken. It's kind of like how you have a pink ribbon, like a, a pink ribbon on a bucket of KFC chicken. That's basically what this whole sort of like, uh, a lot of these, um, the, we, we call them like movements, like progressive movement movements that are out there. We see them as that, but a lot of them are designed to keep us from going as far as we can go. And that's how I see a lot of these vegan communities that are out there. It's, it's very egotistical. It's kind of just like in comparison, it's very weak. Uh, it's angry. It's, it's emotional getting into those emotional bodies. And I'm not, not to say that there's anything wrong with any of that stuff. I know it's a part of the process, but there's a lot of density. There's a lot of weight there that doesn't need to be there if we go into from the deeper perspectives, kind of like how before anything materializes in, 
in the body at first has to materialize in the psyche or the that layer of consciousness and before it materializes there it has to materialize in the spiritual so if we're just becoming a vegan because the animals are being locked up in cages and all this and all that that's cool there's nothing wrong with that but there's also a psyche behind that and behind that psyche there's a a spiritual interpretation behind that and what i'm seeing is that the mainstream movements like that don't go into that and that's i i see that as being very dangerous because um like i was just explaining to a friend earlier the the most dangerous people out there are the ones in like the new age community who are ushering in this new version of what um you know what we should be doing okay like what we should be doing before we start to realize what's going on that's why i i don't go into many depths of like people ask all the time what what do you what are your goals what, well, not goals because we all have goals but what are your like uh what should we do and it's different for everybody like people grow up in different places you have different body structures you have different um makeups that it's a very complex system that this body is in this relationship to the mind and the soul is and we're all just trying to figure it out like we're just starting out you know asking questions about what's going on so i'm very kind of i i, I got a, a another set of eyeballs out there watching these movements this is kind of why i come down pretty hard on the new age community because they claim they got all the answers they got it. I mean, that, that's it. It's just kind of like these vegan communities that are out there, too. I understand that relationship, but, you know, there's a lot of work that needs to be done. And if we're not getting to the roots of this, this uh, the roots of the problem, we're just, cut, you know, at best cutting down the tree. That tree is going to the, the roots are still in the ground. It's going to grow, grow back and it's going to be stronger if we don't handle it at the root structure. So. How I see a lot of these vegan communities is um, it's kind of like akin to how I felt when I was in the Occupy movement. It's still heavily based on the psychological, at best, the psychological warfare, but it's anchored in the physical warfare. And we're not going to be able to hand, uh, deal with any any of the depths of or the extremes of the psychological and the physical if we don't anchor ourselves first in the spiritual warfare. So that's why I see... Uh, people like Dr. Laila Africa uh, and Dr. Sebi uh, get into when they start talking about stuff uh, is go deeper before you start generating like, oh, this is this is it. This is going to save the world. This is this. Oh, OK, here we go again. Um, and that that's kind of like where where I see a lot of those those programs that are out there. And overall, it's kind of like forceful. Um, if what's going on, it doesn't need to be whatever's going on. If it's real, like it, there, there doesn't have to be like shame there. There, like it, it shouldn't be. There should be a natural process to where people are just like, oh, okay, I understand that, I get that, and I see a lot of that going on. A lot of that is because largely because a lot of these people get something they hold on to like veganism or the new age community and they're just like i got this and and you're you're like you're a bad person because this is the way to be and it's like wait a second like do you like are you hearing yourself and um yeah it it, it that's a that's one of the side effects that to being trapped within the psychological warfare consciousness and not really going into the depths of the spiritual warfare consciousness because you're still like seeing yourself with these goggles that are uh, not really, they're not fully activated. Like we, we can't really get into fully activating our space until we start coming from the anchoring ourselves in the spiritual perspectives. And I don't see a lot of these communities going into that. Uh, whether it's the flat earth community the closest the flat earth community gets to that is these christian flat earthers that are just you know talking about the bible and uh how this and that but they avoid like they avoid a lot of the stuff in dealing with um the spiritual warfare against you know 
not only everybody but particular people too and then um how this affects us and it involves the food like the, the soul food we we understand is soul food today it was actually slave slop and back in the day and you know we talk about you're talking about veganism well what's the psychology behind training an entire race of people to destroy themselves with the food that they eat and then develop a relationship they develop these spiritual relationships that's why it's called soul food you develop a soul spiritual relationship with your own self-destruction if we come from that perspective of realizing what's going on people will start to naturally like that's how that's how i i i i came across i started to change my diet and started to see and started to see fam family members and, and friends start to do that at the same time and it's it's way more deep it's a it's a way deeper rooted shift in your consciousness to come from that where uh, in 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 reference to or in comparison to like you know shaming somebody with, with the, you know that's still eating at mcdonald's or still going like that i understand that but people a lot of people eat at mcdonald's or do a lot of these things because the, it, it's it's deeper than just you know the the action of going to mcdonald's this stuff goes into the psyche it goes into the to the soul and i i kind of like don't really want to get I, I don't usually get into those conversations uh around that kind of stuff because there's so many attachments there there's so much deeper there and usually when you start talking about that stuff you're gonna offend somebody and um yeah that's kind of where i'm coming from with that <laughs> there's always somebody to be offended so. I don't, i'm not really concerned with that but if i can't avoid it then i will and usually i'll um avoid it by expanding expanding the uh the perspective and even when you expand it somebody else is going to be pissed off it doesn't really matter but uh, there's always a, a higher perspective to, uh, that I've that I've seen in my own experience to come from, and these perspectives that are being pr promoted by uh, these kind of new age circle movements and communities, and um, they're still very commercialized and very definitely part of the controlled opposition. So, in order for that to break down, it has to be broken down by the individuals who are within that system holding it up, who are keeping it alive from the inside out. And that's based upon the individual journey. And the only person that can shift the individual journey is the individual themselves. So once I realized that, I was like, well, I really don't have to be involved in any of that stuff. I'll just share my perspectives on it in my own way and then people are either gonna either gravitate towards it or they're gonna shy away from it and either way that's not up to me so i all i have to do is make myself available whether it's listening or sharing a perspective and then uh over time um the, the that's that's kind of like um work on work on my own process of shifting that internally and also make share share my um make my uh my journey uh, like my my shifting in that process make it available for people to also see that too so that's how it will help the individuals other individuals shift um, the kind of like the collective version of what's shifting it internally so you um you touched on like a lot of i guess you want to call it new age points but you could also relate it to sort of buddhist philosophy too of attachment and ego and these things and i kind of was i mean you know we all get stuck with our names when we originally sign up for youtube um so um like uh what you i because i i guess i dabbled in the whole new age world and because a lot of the ideas of being empathetic and compassionate and one love and these are all very romantic notions and i'm not disputing them but then um i guess i noticed sort of this 
anti-Christian push in the media to an extent where I wanted to almost investigate it because I didn't grow up in a Christian background. And then the Flat Earth Movement came out and then I started to listen to a lot of Christian people who made sense as well as far as their arguments for you know, the decline of society and the decline of Christianity sort of having this correlation. So just wondering, like, I know you don't put yourself in camps and don't like to necessarily categorize yourself, but how do you see, you know, with these areas that both obviously have controlled oppositions, like, are you, and uh, do you, what's your opinion, I guess, of the Bible and the whole New Age movement in Christianity? I know it's kind of a big question, but Oh, um, <clears throat> so how I really see those in reference to like the controlled opposition. So as great as, as you know, all the beautiful information that I've learned, um, from Christians and also from the new age, it's not to take away a lot of the people a lot of people see, you know, hear certain perspectives and they say, oh, well, you're anti this or anti that. Uh, I don't have enough energy to be anti like that kind of shit because it's so many people doing that stuff. Um, and it's an individual thing. So it's not like to me for me to project myself onto that is one thing. But to share a perspective on how it's part of the controlled opposition. Yes, there's an extreme positive that people get but it's also to a certain degree once you once you hit that ceiling of what the the peak of the new age the bible and the christian all these mainstream religions once you hit that peak you have to go to an internal an internal interpretation of what that is and i hear a lot of people say all the time kind of like oh well the the news or the mainstream media is against Christianity and then a lot of people automatically equate that to it being good like because it's against well the mainstream media is also against Trump it's also against Alex Jones and it has that same sort of effect so that's kind of like a good little com comparative like analogy of in reference to people being like herded into these various groups and you know, people are going to believe and, and, and listen to whatever it is that they, they want to. But from my own experience, you know, my own experience, I've realized that you don't, you, you are your, you are on your own Bible. You're your own Christianity. You're your own everything. Everybody is, like I said, that language of consciousness is the language of this, like, experience. You're an expression of that. And when we adopt or fall into something, something like uh, Christianity or the New Age, we're we're really putting limitations on where we can truly go. I see a lot of that stuff as kind of like doorways or uh, um, path pathways to something greater. Kind of like how the Occupy movement for me, and basically every experience. Is a, is a gateway to something greater, like a, a greater expression of who and what you are. Uh, and a lot of these things that are so comfortable and so ingrained in the mainstream consciousness and the consciousness of people overall, like Christianity, like the mainstream religions, a lot of the times we just need something to hold on to. And what I see in reference to what you just listed off the Bible, the Christianity and the New Age, we, we're suffering a lot of the times from a lack of options. Like a lot of these things are just available to us and we don't have anything else. Like if you were to live somewhere else, somebody's having a completely different perspective on reality. And we wouldn't even know that. We, we wouldn't even know. A lot of the times we don't even know what's going on. So it doesn't matter if you can't really say that, oh, well, the bad guys are against this good thing. Yeah, there's some bad things in there, but if the bad guys are against this good thing, then that means that the good thing is, is, is good. So, uh, and don't worry about the bad things. Well, no, I'm not, I, I'm not saying that some of that stuff in there is, 
is not good. I'm saying, yeah, but you cannot also ignore the usage of that supposedly good stuff against every layer of consciousness from the physical to the psychological and the spiritual. We can't ignore that. And at it's at least equal. It's equally dangerous as it is like uh, helpful, how I see it from my own personal opinion, stuff like the new age. Because once you get to that point, once you reach that peak, like I hit my head at the top of the ceiling of the new age and I was like, wait a second, I'm feeling confined in here. Like I, there's something more, there's like a fire inside of me that, that, that needs to um, feel more of this reality that the new age community has um, said doesn't exist basically. Uh, because they've channeled it into extraterrestrial as aliens simulation theory technology artificial intelligence uh, and the same thing goes for um, christianity or the bible it's like the bible has all the answers like really really like you, you want to subject yourself only to that i mean it's something to reference but also if you're going to use that as a reference i'm going to say well we also have to use or realize how the Bible was used to destroy the spiritual connections that the indigenous people had before the Bible even came into being. Like that connection with nature, we didn't need written language. We had the spoken language that was handed down from generations to generations. Where once you solidified something in a book, then it becomes this idol. So even mainstream religions become an idol. That people pride themselves kind of like how the mainstream media uses christianity as the uh the, the best it's kind of like the america the america of religions that's what christianity is uh it's the the make america great again of religions the, <laughs> yeah and and it's used to it's also used i can't i mean until we get into um, I mean, it can take years to break down how how this has affected um, these mainstream religions, and particularly the Bible and Christianity, has has affected us negatively. And what I see a lot of the times is that uh, the Christians and, uh, and the same thing happens for the New Agers. Is the same thing? They just don't want to look at it at all. And I'm automatically kind of like. I got some questions to ask. I'm going to be like, wait a second. Like something's a little fishy here. You're going to, you talk about all these Christian values and everything, but you ain't going to talk about that blood that's leaking out of that Bible. You're going to talk about the, all that stuff. That's sit all those tears, the trails of tears that are coming out of that. But we, we can't talk about that. If you, then you're automatically labeled anti this anti man. Kid, yeah. This not see, there's so much work to do in reference to that and most people just avoid it completely i'm just like well that's another internal thing that i see people have to deal with on their own and um eventually it'll it'll become more and more obvious and i use uh to help people see that to kind of break some of the density down i i say well you know why do we need a lot of these things to hold on to? Why, why, do, do, why do we need this stuff? Before we move any further, why do you need it? Because the indigenous people didn't have a lot of this stuff. Like, what, what, what's going on here? It's like, oh, no, the, the Bible, this, the Bible. Okay, okay, okay. Well, we have to see. We can't just, it's just another linear perspective for somebody to say, well, the Bible and Christianity, just the same way, like New Age. It, it, this is the answer. This is the key. Uh, well, it's linear. It's a it's a prescription drug, is what it is. It, it becomes a prescription drug, and eventually, people are gonna OD on these prescription drugs, and that's what has happened when a lot of them go mainstream. They become they become this addict and overall you didn't need it in the first place because you were 
you weren't sick. You were convinced that you were sick. And then you started to make yourself sick by constantly being reinforced that you were sick. And a lot of those reinforced sicknesses and diseases are sitting in the depths of the Catholic Church, in the depths of these mainstream religions, and definitely in the depths of that Bible. A lot of that stuff, people just throw it all up the same way throw up humanity. Like, oh yeah, that's just human nature. Really? Who who wrote who who told you that? Who wrote the definitions of what human nature is? We think human nature is going to war and bombing people and all that. That's, that's why a lot of this stuff is is accepted because a lot of this stuff is written in stuff in like the Bibles in these mainstream religions. And we just automatically just throw it up to just like, oh, well, that's just nature. That's human nature. That's spiritual nature. No, that was coded. It was a belief system that was coded and it's reinforced over generations upon generations. And until we start to analyze that stuff, rather than just like, because what I'm seeing, what even with like how the flat earth community is kind of like, the Christians, and it was obvious in that flat earth convention, the Christians kind of just, it's kind of like revamping, like re before you can even finish analyzing uh, the Bible and Christianity for, from the 360 degree perspective, you already just want to like bring it back to life, like, like bring it back to life with like the, some flat earth seasoning on that you're not gonna add you're not gonna analyze this you're not gonna break it down to the umpteenth degree you want to break down the earth and the mind control programming of the earth but you're not gonna break down the mainstream religions i got some questions about that so that and that's in reference to the bible and all that other stuff but they just say oh yeah well they want to like break down the depths of heliocentrism but these flat earth Christians, they don't want to break down the depths of the Bible. They don't want to go into that. They don't want to break down the depths of the origins of all these mainstream religions. They don't want, they just want to completely avoid it. And I, I just distance myself from that because like I said, people who, who need that, fine. There's nothing wrong with that. That's part of your journey. I'm not saying, you know, whatever it is that you're going to do, you do your thing. Um, but for me, I personally don't need that. And um, I I don't think like, in my, I wouldn't, you know, recommend it to my friends or family. If they want to reference, you know, stuff like that, fine. There's nothing. And even like even my friends and family that are still going to the church, I don't look down on them. Like, at least you got something like most people nowadays don't even have any kind of that's what like the university system, this is kind of like a bigger interpretation than in reference to what you were talking about with controlled opposition. It's like the university system is inherently atheist. So in <laughs> I'd rather have people going to church and like having some kind of resentment, some kind of understanding or interpretation of the spirit rather than just be a floating piece of, you know, dirt that just got shot out of the big bang forever. Like that's so there's that's how I'm seeing like there's these steps that are um, allowing us to expand and we're just continually expanding. If you are basing everything, um, if you're basing your expansion upon something that's confined, the Bible is confined. Uh, Christianity, these mainstream religions, that they're confined. They have limitations. Uh, that's why they're 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 just meant to serve a purpose what i'm saying is that that purpose is uh in reference to how it's used against us it's it serves a purpose kind of like the new age serves a purpose to be a controlled opposition yeah we're gonna this is gonna help you become uh more in, uh, awaken enlightened and woke and all this other shit but what are you not really looking at on a 360 degree perspective we're missing a lot of this stuff because we get too enveloped in the toys or the prescription drugs or the idols that we've adopted and they've uh, we we end up priding ourselves uh, because we're not like we used to be but maybe what you are now is also something that you will be shifting away from later on down the road if you if you spend all of your energy priding yourself in what you are now 
based upon on what you were, it's going to be that much harder to realize what you could be. So if you, if you just surround yourself by priding yourself in this reality and not in locking yourself into these, these constraints that we call like religions or new age communities or flat earth Christians or whatever it is, then you're just creating another, another safety net, another bubble. Um, and how, from my own experience, I don't see it as anything wrong anymore because I've realized that they're, um, they're, uh, they're stepping stones. And when I get approached with a lot of that, that information, I'm just like, you know, cool, you know, do, do you think to each his own? Uh, but I'm not going to trap myself on one stone because I know every day that I wake up, there's something new to learn. I have a deeper perspective. And if I'm just going to uh, limit myself to reciting Bible Bible um, quotes, then, you know, I'm not, I'm not me anymore. I'm just a, 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 a copy machine for a book or a copy machine for a religion. It's another version of graying everything out and, and um, um, kind of just like controlling the drum circle, controlling the the expansion of consciousness and actually once it that's why i said it expands it helps you expand like the new age helped me expand but it was up to a point and then once you get to that point you're either going to challenge yourself to uproot yourself and move to that next layer of consciousness or you're going to stay comfortable there and what i'm seeing with a lot of these groups and communities and movements is that they're in they're inherently a controlled opposition because they're designed to do that kind of like how info wars alex jones he's like an obvious one to do that uh, he's he wants to trap you in that americana patriot version of reality but how much shit is he missing like how much is he not speaking about on per he avoids and constantly and that's on purpose same thing happens with a lot of these other so-called movements and before we start jumping on a bandwagon of something, people are jumping on this bandwagon and they got bricks in their backpacks. They got bricks in their suitcase and they're just like jumping on this, this, uh, this um, wagon called expansion. And then it's just weighing down and eventually it'll just weigh down to the way the thing doesn't even damn move anymore. So that's how I'm seeing a lot of these, on the macro scale, how a lot of these programs like the New Age uh, and uh, Christian mainstream religions and the Bible, they, they weigh you down eventually. Yes, you, you might be able to move like you've never moved before, like you are walking before and you were weighed down with that backpack before, but now you're just on a wagon. But the more stuff, you got to take that whole thing that, that's there. You got to take that whole New Age community and you got to wear it. And when you're in that space, you might be on a wagon, you might be able to move for a little while, but eventually those wheels are gonna, the, the tread's gonna wear down, the tire's gonna get flat, and that thing is just gonna buckle. And now what are you left with? Now now what what is there? How many times can you just keep repeating something that a whole bunch of other people wrote down or something that, you know, somebody supposedly channeled information. Like how many times are you going to repeat that nonsense? A lot of the times it keeps us from um, recognizing and analyzing and acknowledging what's happening right now and what's, what's uh, being designed to affect us in the future. And definitely it's designed to keep us from recognizing what happened in the past. So, a lot of the times we get enveloped in what these things that we think are for our benefit. Yes, they are for your benefit, but what I'm saying, they're for your benefit up to a point. When you reach that point, if you don't, if you don't realize that or challenge yourself to expand beyond the limitations of whatever it is that you now prided yourself in, then you just set up, set yourself up for another, another trap. 
Yeah, it, I mean, it, it's interesting, isn't it, how these people are so quick to be able to, like, break away from the mainstream media and develop this new identity, but then get so attached to that new identity as if they didn't realize they just made this transformation, but not assuming that transformation is going to keep continuing. I've always thought that was really interesting how people get stuck in that way. And it's also funny, too, how people will, you know... Um, be uh actually you know I'm, I'm talking too much figs you want to say something i'm sure go ahead sorry <laughs> you barely talked at all <laughs> no no go, barely... go ahead go ahead go ahead go ahead i'm sure you have some questions there no i mean i kind of i mean i just i agree with everything that subtle is saying and i kind of like i don't know it gets I guess one of the reasons why I see people getting attached to their new version of reality is because they, you know, it's like that waking up process that people talk about. Like you see the world's really messed up and then you want solutions for it. And the easiest thing you can do is jump back into the new fishbowl and call it freedom. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And so I get why people try to find a comfy new place to be more aware because you can't run from this reality that you've learned. You have to deal with it. And so you just kind of create this new little world for, or you stumble into a new little world. Some people it's blue avians, other people it's flat earth and they just sit there and they don't expand. And I get why that happens. But even for me, like right now as a person who's trying to expand from there and look into deeper things, you know, like you face a, a lie. Well, okay. Finding out the truth is one thing, but now you got to find out why the lie happened and who did the lying and what were their motivations? How long has this lie been going on? How, what sort of group or entity is going to invest themselves in a lie that goes on for this long. Like, so that kind of just leads me down a path. Like even you sort of like on your videos, I'll hear you like, you'll say they, and then you'll say, well, I kind of am talking about the, a system. And then, you know, it's like one of the things I'm trying to get my head around is like, what really is the enemy? And like, this came up with between um, you, Buddha, and um, me on the last stream when I was talking about maybe it's this forest through the trees kind of effect. Like we keep looking for the cause of all this and we're not noticing that we're the ones perpetuating this whole entire thing. So I guess... I don't know. I guess my question is kind of like, what do you perceive is really going on here? There's obvious, obviously people's um, lack of introspection is helping to move this whole system forward. But where do you think this all came from? Like what, I guess, I don't know. That's a big question, but do you know what I'm asking? I would, uh, uh, how I kind of see it, I relate it to like, like where did chaos came from? Like, wh where did that come from? Like, wh wh when the thought process of chaos, what is that? Like, we're, we're talking about now when we start questioning the reality, when we start throwing the big bang out the window, start throwing gravity out the window, evolution theory out the window. Okay, well, what do you have now? Like, what it, what's going on now? Now that you threw all that out the window, what are you? Okay, well, people say now, oh, well, we can see flat earth and now we know there's a creator. Okay, is that it? Are you going to stop there? Like, you just, you just destroyed this, the entire synthetic universe and you think you know it all already? Like, that's it? Like, it's just, that's, that's the end of it? Like, that's another trap, but we have this tendency to like get caught up in these, like you were saying, like these these little comfort bubbles. Um, kind of got thrown off my train of thought there with the 
Okay. Yeah, it, it's 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 funny. Yeah, how like we um how the New Age's mantra is like question everything, but as soon as we get any type of answer, we jump all over it. I think I think just as people, we don't like it's an uncomfortable state to be in a state of questioning. But I'm assuming you think that we need to obviously go deeper in that. I think that's where she was. Well, what you were saying about chaos and what she was saying is like where how do we get past these uh, origins of what is behind this? If we're, it seems like we're never going to find it. Um, that's a heavy thing to uh, verbalize. I don't know if I would actually go into that. I think, I think we're a living, how I see it, we're a, a living example of what it is that we're looking for. And once we start figuring out what it is that we are, just by seeing, you know, reconnecting with, first of all, what did the, what that pre, the, the consciousness that predates this synthetic consciousness, which envelops heliocentrism and all that other things that are designed to keep us from expanding. Once we start breaking that down, then, and you also have to, fill that space because now you have all this empty space in in our reality largely we didn't even know it was there like i was talking with a friend earlier today um who's kind of new to the flat earth information and one of the main things was was like kind of like have you ever really asked questions about it like you just automatically believe nasa you automatically believe the pictures you see you believe the science you believe this but when you really ask these questions you're asking about like these are theories they're all theories so you being uh, an, an interpreter of you know kind of like higher perspectives like spiritual perspectives of this reality why aren't we challenging ourselves to to uh, go into the spiritual perspectives of the earth itself. Why aren't we going into to that and, and realizing that? Why? Because we've just automatically have chosen, have just accepted what we've been programmed to believe. And we don't really see it as a belief system until somebody tells you, hey, you're in a belief system. You're, you're in a religion right now. You didn't know it because you were trained to not ask questions about it that's how religions work you just have the faith in it what i'm saying is that when you break all that stuff down and and like how flat earth does it yes you get into um having I I introducing yourself to the realization of a creative intelligence uh, but once you see the creative intelligence, you also have to, you can't ignore the destructive intelligence. That's why I was getting into this chaos. So um, going back to the original question, like where, like, where did this stuff come from? That's when, how I see it is like asking like, well, where did chaos come from? So just imagine, okay, well, chaos came from somewhere. It's a thought, it's part of this. It has some kind of, uh, meaning in this existence in this reality well chaos and just like anything else it's an alchemy there's an algorithm there's equations in there and all you have to do is figure out how to manipulate that alchemy it, it's so it goes back so deep that we, we go into the depths of breaking down like um, um, certain like what we're comfortable with like hardcore flat earthers are just like oh yeah i know this this and this okay cool well what about you know all this other stuff like what about like stuff like the origins of chaos the origins of this creative intelligence like we can spend entire lifetimes of figuring this out and what i'm saying what i'm saying ultimately is the benefit is when you start questioning stuff like that it makes it easier to see how these systems are affecting us and you can inherently you can like you can knock out at least two birds with one stone um, by by doing by going to the origins of something like that instead of pinpointing it to one sort of thing. Kind of like visualize the macro interpretations of what's going on. So how I see it is that this this alchemy or this magic of uh, chaos 
has just been not not only it's been used by um entities and eventually people to uh create another version uh, a sim- like a a parallel reality that runs uh it, it runs parallel to the time codes or the timelines of our everyday reality our conscious it's a mimic it's used to the parasite is is a mimic process and it's the blood that's flowing through the mimic program is this chaos energy so it keeps you in this chaotic version of reality and people have been people are now bleeding this chaotic blood and thinking that it's their own blood but it's not it's not your blood your blood is not chaos your blood is more complex than that chaos is just a part of your blood but what i'm saying is that until you start analyzing and interpreting what the your spiritual blood is and start going into what that is if you don't realize or go into that then you're not really going to start breaking down what uh, how these programs like where they came from and how they affect us we're, we get we're going to get caught up in the finger pointing and the linear interpretations basically the micro scales and never really allowing ourselves to go into the macro scales so in reference to like where like where did this stuff come from like that's kind of like uh it, it's an it's a question that you can kind of analyze you can spend an entire lifetime going into um but um it, it, it's how i see it's really going into you're really asking questions about the macro storyline in reference the relationship between the macro and the micro Yeah, because I just see this system is like so heavily invested in convincing us, like what you were talking about earlier, like it's just human nature to be violent. Like, no, who told you that? Like, it's not my nature to be that. It's my nature to wonder how someone could be that place. You know, I'm not going to be convinced. But I am seeing very clearly that the system is heavily invested in people. It's that inhumane part of, of the so interested in like what something is really, truly trying to make us less human, it seems like. And I don't I don't appreciate it. And I'd like to figure out the origins of it, I guess. I, but it seems like really everywhere I look, it's it's humanity that's helping it along. So then, I, you know, I kind of got to wonder if it really is that forest through the trees kind of situation. Like, we, are we the source of this really, truly? Like, is it somewhere in all humans to behave like that? And some of us chose not to be. Or is something trying to convince us of that and why i guess i see it as like the extremes of the extremes of the light and dark the extremes of the positive and negative the electric and the magnetic um we have this because how i see it is we're like babies we're growing and we're in this babies in this extreme of the light and the dark where you're gonna have the the craziest shit go down and then you're also going to have some of the greatest potential go down all in the same place and in order for something great in reference to like the, the the relationship between the spirit the soul the mind and the body you have to first clear a lot of the stuff that you would be subjected to from the extremes of something like control and pride and ego and all that other stuff, you're not going to allow yourself to go into the extremes of maximum potential. If you're still subjecting yourself to the extremes of ridiculousness and where we are in this place, how I see it uh, is that it's, it's a place to learn how to, um, to discern the difference between 
those extremes. Then we talk about duality and all that. Um, we're still learning this, and overall, individuals might be on a on a particular part of their their path or whatever in reference to that process. But there are also how I see it, like um, there's this kind of separation. It, you're gonna have people who are like gonna invest their entire lives and their entire beingness to nature and the relationship with like the most high and the spirit the soul whatever that is it's the most like vibrant the creative intelligence that also is aware of the destructive intelligence but you're also going to have the you're going to if you're going to have that then you're going to have the the opposite of that too that's going to exist and you're going to have that exist inside people so it's not the people that are actually that it's what they've been convinced of by the energies of the extremes of this reality. So there are entities, how I see it, this is just my own kind of like personal observation of it. Uh, if you're going to have kind of like um, relationships with, um, some people say angels or like the most high and, and um, guides and your ancestors and so on and so forth, well, if you're going to have that, well, there's going to have to be a balance for that, too. So you're going to have the, the balance of that. So if you can be uh, if you can get guidance from uh, your your soul self, the most higher creative intelligence, whatever it is, then you can also you're going to also have um, like anti guidance energies that are out there. And what's happening is that before you can before you can get into the depths of creating like building worlds and building universes, you have to be, you have to first clear out or uh, not be subjected to the energies, the extremes within this realm that are designed to make a profit off of destroying worlds. So right now we are convinced that in order for that entity, that energy, whatever that is to live kind of like a demon possession you have to be hollowed out. So what ha what's happening in flat earth or heliocentrism is a perfect example of this. Heliocentrism basically hollows you out. You're filled with emptiness and darkness and um, just this self-destructive nothingness. And when once you're hollowed out so much, then everything within the spectrum of that self-destructive uh, counter counter intuitive counterproductive energies now that energy has a space to live you can call whatever you want some people say archons or demons or um uh, aliens extraterrestrials whatever you want to call it i just like to say that hey something is existing like there's this energy that exists that has to live inside of hollowed out innocent experiencers and you're through the systems, the macrocosm has to convince you that it has to shrink you all the way down to nothing so that you're actually living in a 0.001% of your reality. You're alive. Like this is why people believe that they're the body and not really understanding that they're the soul having a, a physical experience. It's the, it's the flipping and reversing. So not only have we been flipped and reversed into an, uh, um, interpreting this reality for what it is but we've been once you're flipped in reverse now you can be programmed into another version of reality and that's how i'm seeing what what's happening and that's being slowly um slowly but surely uh removed from our realities and and and, and how it, it how it happens over it's kind of like a frequency you have this up and down up and down up and down like a like a, a radio wave or whatever it is so you're going to have this peak. If you slow that all the way down, you have this peak of, oh, like we maxed it out with well, this is cool. Or just say like, for instance, technology, where you're going to have the technology at that peak, you're still going to have that destructive intelligence that's going to be working at your peaks and at your lowest points. So for example, something like if somebody considers technology to, to be a peak, well, and it's, it's good to see, well, it's easy to see how that's used today, that something like technology or in another example is like the new age. You can see the new age is being counterproductive and seen as a peak at the same time. Well, you're also going to have that decline 
because the other energies are going to work against you in some kind of way if you're not equipped to uh, interpret the entire wave frequency. If you're shrinking yourself down to one version, like one loop or one in-between space or one like the top, if you pride yourself in the top or if you implode yourself at the bottom part of the frequency, you're still choosing that experience. You're having, you're, you're based upon like the, the fact that that's the only way that you can experience that really you've chosen. Like people choose to be um, uh, like miserable all the time. It's used as a defense mechanism with some people. That's a better way to explain it. But some people use anger to keep people at an arm's length. They're just like, they use a lot of this stuff. People use like their, their intelligence or whatever to keep people at a distance. And then, you just trap yourself in one version of the microcosm and never really observe the, the macrocosm of the entire frequency. So within those up and down frequencies of what this realm is going into the extremes of the light, the extremes of the dark, the extremes of the positive, the extremes of the negative, how I'm seeing is that we're coming out of this, uh, this extreme sort of uh the like the the peak the peak of the extreme self implosion is that is the bottom part of that frequency and we just express it so we express it through our experience and we're becoming more cognizant of the the world itself when you become more aware of the world itself the 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 the, the non-physical or the consciousnesses that are non-physical in all of the extremes there you can see them more you can hear them more you can feel you can feel them more you can also like in reference to like re reconnecting with the ancestors the relationship with the most high uh angels and well the the other side is also true once you become more connected with whatever you want to call that stuff you also have you're also challenged with the the um you're challenged with the experience of having now being able to see all of these um, self-destructive programs or consciousness that's there and you can either put it in a box put it in a shelf and just like leave it somewhere and just pride yourself in how great you are in a great new ager or you're a super super christian or super bible super flat earth or super whatever you want to call yourself you can do that forever it's not going to and the system wants the the, the system benefits from that because progress also hits a peak it doesn't move and the, these entities of the energy or whatever that's working against you that needs you to be hollowed out um, needs you to be priding yourself and stuff like that so it will profit off of your chaos and what I'm, what I'm seeing is that, that that chaotic alchemy is being seen, finally seen for what it is rather than just being accepted as part of our experience. You know, bullshit, calling bullshit across the board. And once you call bullshit, you not only have to see how deep that is in, in, in working against us, but you also have to inhabit a space of deeply planted roots that allow you to now walk that path of, of, of acknowledging how this stuff works um, for us and against us. Yeah, it could be a challenge doing that, facing that every day, <laughs> walking that path every day. So do you have other questions, Buddha? Um, yeah, yeah, for sure. I, I could ask a hundred, but um, I guess like what I'll ask is um, something that, that I has um, not a lot of people have touched on, but you have mentioned it in a couple of your videos is um, something I've always noticed is that there seems to be this, um, like with these hoaxes that happen, these um, sort of, or even with like NASA, almost like these deliberate things that could be edited out, but they seem to put them in there. They seem to 
be showing like these crisis actors and these scenes that don't make sense as if to say, you know, these, it's, it's not even questioning whether it's fake or not. It's like, they want us to know it's fake. And you had kind of alluded to them, uh, I guess, kind of imploding their old world to bring in um, some type of new age thing that's going to come. And like in the same way you were talking about um, how you were at the Occupy movement, and that was to protest this corrupt financial system. And then a month or two later, cryptocurrency came out as this ultimate solution to how to fight the man, but it actually is still the same system, if not worse. And I'm just wondering if you wanted to build on that as far as like why these hoaxes seem deliberate if you think they're really trying to usher in some new age that's going to come along and maybe what form that would take well the most effective mind control is the mind control that you inflict on yourself you have to do it yourself uh you have to you have to be the one that activates your own self implosion so these systems like Trump, Alex Jones, cryptocurrency, false flags, 9-11, they, voting, going to war, all this stuff, this is, this is a way to make the next mind control program engaging for you so that it becomes your reality. So when, you, when the system makes, makes these programs... Um, so complex and then they play your emotional body and then they make it like they, they they sprinkle in some real stuff like oh 9-11 like alex jones is a good example of this he's just a he's just a ball of a whole bunch of information but it just maxes out at that point the new age community maxes out at that point and the system has knows this knows people are going to fall for it and uses it to continue that that agenda because it's beneficial for like I said in many in many of the videos is the and I don't know if I said it earlier but the the mind control program this it program the system in order to stay alive it can't sell you like stone age consciousness you're not going to buy it your consciousness is beyond that so it has to evolve itself with the, the co consciousness of the individual and mostly the macro consciousness, the collective consciousness. So um, if it doesn't do that, then the alchemy is not going to work. It's going to be like um, inflicting. It, it's going to be like uh, something, somebody doing something to you. See, it's not at that. It's not that effective um, when it's kind of like a preacher, like a preacher is not as effective as you are preaching to yourself. You preach yourself into a particular religion or a particular movement or belief system. You are the one that actually does it, that, that makes it last through your entire experience that opens up the majority of the channels that are deeply rooted within you. So when, you're play, when your emotional body is played, when your fear body is played, like, like all of your very kind of like uh, whatever's natural to your reality, uh, it's manipulated to be seen a certain way. Just kind of like how heliocentrism kind of created this whole idea of global warming to make you not only make you believe in the globe, obviously, but make you think that you should trust these people and you are a part of it. Like you are a part of global warming. You're, you are a part of the problem. So you have to fix, it's your fault. You have to fix these problems and you're the one, you're responsible for all of this. And, and now you have people running around wearing pussy hats and talking about, I'm a feminist and running around talking about, let's stop global warming. And they just keep televising this, this, this kind of, uh, engaged thinking you're in, engaged within a limited consciousness version of change that uh, is the it's the ultimate um, it's the ultimate uh, mind control because it's you doing it to yourself a preacher is not going to be able to mind control you more than you can mind control yourself so if the, all of these various systems are created around you and you pick them off the shelf you 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 pick like 
you pick all these different versions of mind control and you put it in your body and now you're like, this is me. This is who I am. I'm this. Okay, well, what is that? Well, and then they just pick one thing that they pick from something else. Oh, well, I'm this. Uh, okay. Um, uh, they, yeah, so ultimately that's how I see why all these false flags and all this stuff is is uh, so prevalent in within our societies because it 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 affects us deeply like you're emotionally engaged like playing like the same way love and sex is better example sex is used to sell everything sex is it's it's a natural thing the more natural it is the more deeply it's going to be rooted in your uh the origins of the root structures of your belief system so um that's why sex is used to sell everything burgers candy movies uh, everything there is it's used to sell that so false flags are another version of sex being used to sell a burger but do you, do you see like recently like there's been a lot more people who are quote unquote like waking up and realizing that that whole false flag thing isn't real like they're all hoaxes and that we're going to be walking into some new new age thing that they're going to bring out that maybe isn't here yet? Or do you think it just all exists within our thought? Like, do you think there's a new, do you think there's a spiritual cryptocurrency coming out? It's already been here. It's already, that's what the new age is. That's what all of this evolution, that's what every single controlled opposition movement is. The feminism, the Black Lives Matter, the new age, cryptocurrency all of this all of these are uh, microcosms of the macrocosm which is that um, spiritual cryptocurrency that you're talking about the new age is not new at all it's very old like and you guys know that most people know that the, the new age has been planted in our um, consciousness for hundreds of years uh, same thing going with uh, the um, it's kind of like the effect the same way that the Christopher Columbus and the Jesuits and um, like Christianity and Catholicism was used to uh, affect the indigenous people all across the world, actually. But from this perspective, from South America, they used the Spanish to go slaughter all the way up through South America into North America. They used the softer approaches like the French uh, through in the, the the Louisiana Purchase and that whole thing, they use them to to, to create another Hegelian dialectic. Or the, these are the good guys and these are the bad guys. Or they're on the same team. They're no good guys and bad guys. They're doing the same shit to you. They're just doing it a different style. So every single version is just another version, based upon, like I said earlier, the level of consciousness of the people. So as, um people are waking more up more to these systems the system has to get more it has to be it has to be more out there so this is why we're seeing more false flags more um spiritual cryptocurrencies all over the place you're just seeing more and more and more so we're not only uh seeing more because our eyes are bigger uh, but we're also um seeing more because the system is is needing to stay alive and it's also uh, gauging where it's at by trying to figure out who's still going to fall for these programs like so this is why it, it, the, the the more events that they put out there and the more notes that they have the more numbers that they can run on um, on how they could uh control people the more refined this new world agenda could be. So they're taking polls, they're taking, they're watching these YouTube videos, they're watching Facebook and YouTube, uh, I mean, uh, Instagram and Twitter feeds, they're watching all of this and, or it's watching all of this engaging um, what, how that spiritual cryptocurrency or new world order or whatever, how that's gonna be more accepted by the people um, and, it's all based upon see it's, it's it's based upon the people first it's not based upon the, the the people creating this program the people creating this program are basing their their movements 
or its movements on us. So it's us first. That's a more empowered space to stand in rather than what it's doing. So it, you can see it more. Uh, it's more obvious when you come from that perspective. So yeah, it's it's changing. It's evolving. Yes, it's going to be a particular thing because I see it as it's the end of the line for a lot of these uh, mind control programs and we'll see we'll see what what plays out i don't know how it's going to play out yeah it, we'll see it's it's, it's certainly uh interesting to watch it all go down though but um just another thing with that um you talked about um how us i guess um speaking back and like protesting and trying to fix the system is not the answer because the system itself is like i'm not sure if you say designed to be broken but something along those lines so the concept and we've talked about this on the show is just to basically like walk away from it but like do you subscribe to that idea like geographically like moving to some island in the caribbean and starting fresh or like how do you see fighting the system I don't see anything wrong with people doing that because you're going to do whatever it is that you're going to do. Uh, but for me personally, I um, <clears throat> I don't engage in that in the system the, the, in like the traditional way, uh, which is like protesting and all that other stuff. Um, at the same time, it's also helping at some layer of consciousness. It's it's like like I said, these are all stepping stones, so. So just because we're talking about this information now doesn't mean that uh, everybody, like other people are needing, some people need Alex Jones. Some people need TYT and Bernie Sanders based because like for me, like uh, that was another part of this whole thing. It's like, are you a Democrat or you're a Republican? I'm like, what the hell is this? Like, I don't, I don't who says I gotta be this? Like even asking that question like th somebody who's asking that question and feeling that way is going to start to go into questioning the entire system and then go into like TYT or start looking, listening to Bernie Sanders or listening to Alex Jones and all this other stuff. And then it's a, pro it's a process. Just like I said, you, the, the, the mind control, deeply rooted mind control is going to come when, you do it to yourself. Well, the same goes for um, like anti-mind control or critically thinking or expanding your consciousness. It's going to come when you do it yourself and you have to go through each layer of consciousness um, organically if you try to just, you know, use the cheat codes or the game genie, you're not going to, you're not going to, you're only going to get so far. So the system is using that um, to keep people down and it's up to the individual to to break a lot of those those codes and but you have to go through those you got to hit your head some sometimes you're gonna hit to bump your head in order to learn some people are hard headed they need to learn that way I was like that um, I, I can't really say I still am in many ways but I still feel like in order for me to learn I gotta go through the depths of it and some people can explain that as being hard headed the thing is, I, I can see what I'm going to hit my head on a little more clearly now because I'm, you know, paying attention and looking for it now. And it's needed, like, things are needed for people. So that's why, like, nowadays I don't look down on so much on the new age. I, I know there's two sides. There's, like, all right, well, I see how it works for people. Same thing with, like, mainstream religions and the Bible. I see how this is needed for people. At the same time, me, in my own journey, I'm going to speak on how, yes, that's needed for some people, but at the same time, it's also very destructive, and it will destroy you if you limit yourself to to that. Uh, and, and that will, in my, how I see it, it will help us, you know, start to see some of these, how these systems affect us on the macro scale. So would you say, like, the, uh, the enlightenment is the journey? Is that how you describe it? What's enlightenment? 
Um, well, I guess like the, um, the, anth- yeah, okay. That's a big question. Uh, like, um, like the, uh, the answer or whatever it is that we're looking for on, um, what it is we're supposed to, uh, build our foundation of like the, um, I guess the ethics or the moral or the principles that we're going to stand on, could the journey itself be that platform for us to stand on? It's, uh, yeah, sure. It, I mean, it's part of the, the experience itself is so complex. Is so people at the same time you can say like so people come here. Not everybody is, is. I can't really say everybody's here to do the same thing. Like some people came here to do certain experiences. Maybe maybe, maybe it has nothing to do with enlightenment. Maybe they. Some people are going to live and die uh, imploding themselves. Uh, I don't know the answers of the reasons why that's like that. Uh, but I, that if that reality exists, then that kind of throws a monkey wrench in the whole idea of, you know, enlightenment and that whole thing. Maybe some people came here to just, you know, completely like implode. I mean, I, when and how that exists is by realizing that there are many people that live and die like that. Not to say it's good or a bad thing like that, and it's, it's a good. Not to say it's a good thing, just to say like people will live and die, and and and, and totally self destruct like through that entire experience. Like, what about them? Like, how is that involved with enlightenment? Like we can see, we can talk about how that is from our perspective, but what about people who are, you know, doing that? I don't know. I don't know that I don't have the answers for that. And if I don't have the answers for that, or if I haven't really conceptualized how that fits in to the other world, then I, I can't really answer questions or share perspectives on. That's why I asked what enlightenment is, is because it's like, you know, what is this? This is, it's more complex than a word like that. So I, I kind of like stay away from um from that kind of terminology but to to add to what you were saying or to to, to put it simply I, I guess i could see how yes the experience the journey is this this way to become more aware of ourselves and what's going on i mean that's that's a regular observation but um there's something more complex there too. It's part that, that's only part of it. It's one thing that we've talked about a lot on this channel is this idea, because you know, when you get into that, the people who talk about simulation theory and stuff, they talk about this non person character what is it buddha like non-play they start to throw out this idea that people aren't people or they're empty vessels and and i can get my head around people who can be so hollowed out like so disconnected from who they really truly are like on a spiritual level i understand how those people can appear to be kind of like vessels but I'm not really going to buy into the theory that some people aren't people or whatever that theory is trying to espouse. So we, but we've talked about it a lot on the show because when you look at the world and you start waking up to how crazy the world is and and these weird systems that are in place that cause us to behave a certain way without even being aware that we are controlled and you kind of, First, you want to break out, right? And and you want to find out who's doing it, why, why is it happening? But then you want to break other people out of it too. And you kind of, you end up having to face the reality of there's so many different people. And that's like Buddha, when you were just asking about the journey, like I was just picturing, you know, like we all each have our different go through, like some people, go through the new age community and learn a lot and move on from there. Yeah, you can, I people. think your connection might be bad or maybe it's mine, but your voice sounded robotic there. Start with Christian. Huh? 
Did you say my connection is bad? Oh, maybe it's mine, but your voice sounded robotic to me. Well, uh, I think it's, um, I think it's, uh, it's not yours. It's it's hers because I can hear you clearly, Buddha. But, oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, I'm robotic. Oh, that sucks. Okay, well, I'm going to just stop talking like to Buddha. You take over. <laughs> I'm not um, using a microphone, so I don't know. I'm going to mute. Okay. Um, well, I think she was just talking about, like, um, I guess, because like, I haven't been um, a person who's been felt overly compelled, but I've noticed this a lot with people in the truth community is they sort of have this um, innate desire to want to challenge and wake up, whatever that means, everyone around them. And I haven't felt that personally, but I've noticed that a lot. And people say how frustrating it is when they learn something they want to share it and then other people seem to have no time of day for it um and i think that just to me has always spoken to the fact that maybe people just get trapped in this sort of mask or ego identity that they roll around with and eventually that just becomes who they are and so any type of challenge to that mask or structure they're just not gonna hear it and so they don't want to accept that do you have any um like have you felt the need to and convince others and i'm sure you've run into obstacles when you have so how do you address that i guess you just do your show but have you had it on a personal level where you really needed someone to see the world in your way and they haven't been able to i used to when that was a big part of like the, when i got out of the new age kind of mentality was a big part of that because the new age community is is basically uh that's the premise to the entire community it's to do that but to what to what degree to what like end game like what is that and they have their own agendas there and then when you take that down to the individual then you're gonna you're gonna also find another agenda so that's what i was talking about earlier about that detachment to where you're gonna have people who are just gonna be like they're gonna be like i don't care about anything like uh, i'm just gonna be ultimately not caring about anything and then you're gonna have people that are gonna like seek you so it's the extremes again it's the extremes of nothingness and then it's the extremes of somethingness and the somethingness is gonna gravitate towards you Whereas you're still going to have the extremes of nothingness. So, you know, what, it's up to them. They go, it's always going to go down to the individual and you can't change anybody else. They can only change themselves. So once that you're anchored in that space, then you have an inherent detachment from you know, what it is that you're doing. So that's why like on my, on my kind of channel, I, uh, I just, I just make the information available and I don't really have like an attachment to, what people individually are doing to it. I'm aware and acknowledge, uh, I acknowledge what people are doing with this information and I, I use it to help uh, like refine what it is that I'm doing, but I don't have the attachment of needing to do that. I have a natural um, uh, kind of feeling to express myself and share with people. And that also is a part of that, but it's not, it doesn't have the density like it did before in the new age community where I was like, Oh, this, you gotta, you gotta wear this, you know, this crystal, or you gotta do this, or you gotta meditate this. You gotta do like, no, that's just another, it's another trap. So I don't really, I don't really engage in that kind of space. I, I just allow it's, it's better to just allow it to be and just play your music. And if people are going to listen to it or not, that's up to you. That's not up to you. And if your intention is set in the beginning, like if your heart is in the right place, if your consciousness is in the right place, uh, and the ultimate, the ultimate space of that is to not have any attachments to it, um, th that'll allow you to to get into more of what is, you know, the highest intent there. Like to be totally like, you know. The most high is is doing whatever is going on. I'm just like, I'm just here, you know, doing playing my music in my own way. 
but ultimately there's a there's a higher intelligence that is a, a part of this that um, is beyond my comprehension from this perspective and I can only really focus on my perspective just like other really other people can as far as expressing myself just like other people can only express their own perspective but if you put an attachment on it you're entering into another world and uh, I don't see any more benefit on it uh, anymore it's more counterproductive do you think that do you think though that everyone has this um like artistic side and you've just chosen to develop it and work with it or do you think it's something that only a select amount of people have the gift to do like how do you see like what you do in your search for the truth just compared to other people or do you think about that do you just think about it only in your own world I don't really go into thinking about it too much because I like having people being like beautifully different. I love the I love the nature of, you know, diversity and just the extremes of people just being all over the place and like I said earlier, everybody is a particular language. The same thing goes everybody is a particular art. Art is not limited to um like what we call art, like people are like, you're, you're a piece of art. You're everybody is a piece of art. And um, me personally, I just see my art just happens to be like a musician plays music. They're telling stories, a writer. I mean, you're, you're telling stories depending on what instrument you use. Um, I just happen to um, like to write and then um, another part of where my vested um, intention comes in is um, having like a connection to or a responsibility, kind of like how the indigenous people said that you have to take care of this earth for the next seven generations. Um, well, I have that personally too. So I'm vested in it. I'm going to use every, since that really doesn't exist across the board um, in the mainstream reality, um, that adds to my desire to um, adjust my art to help with that process of people seeing that. Not to mention the responsibility that I have to my little cousins, my little second cousins, my goddaughters, like all these all these other younger generations who are coming up now who are being raised by, in many cases, some people who are just, you know, just trying to, you know, get by. They don't have the time to really go into the depths of what's going on behind the scenes because the responsibility of providing for your kids is so overwhelming that you, you can't even really go into that. And, and if you do, it's going to affect your ability and in, uh, in how you're working. And a lot of, a lot of people aren't willing to do that and there's nothing wrong with that. I mean, I, I don't see anything wrong with that. So um, <clears throat> in reference to like you were asking, like, is this for everybody? I can't really, or I, I don't see, I can't see it like that. I think it's way more complex than something like that. But I, I will say that everybody does have the potential to um, interpret whatever it is that we're talking about like right now in their own artistic way in their own language the potential is there but it's not just about your potential there's there's so much more com there's more complexities involved in this entire experience there's there's more there so once people um are uh surround are once people are once the information is becomes part of an individual's consciousness, then it's really up to them. You still have the choice to do with uh, w with that information. You're either going to do something with it or you're not. I mean, that's up to the individual, and that's more of um, like more of a reality than you know saying, "Oh, well, is this for everybody?" You know, I can't say that, um, but there and there's also the 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 difference between being aware of this information 
and sharing it and being aware of this information and non-physically sharing it because you're non-physically sharing it when you're becoming aware of it. So this is the natural stuff that's happening. That's what I more focus on. That's a good when, point. Um, when uh, you have th this vast array of information, it doesn't really matter what you're saying with your voice. It's what you're saying with your spiritual voice. It's, it's there. Is it there or is it not? Right. Okay. Cool. Um, do you um do you gotta go? Can we? I was gonna ask you about like your opinion on uh, like race, but I'm not sure if that's a big topic. And if you gotta go, I'm not sure what your schedule. Like, do you have time to get into that for a bit? I've been going into it a lot recently, uh, um, and, and it's just gonna be very simple. I mean, um, the best way to explain it is kind of like the differences of flowers. I mean. I don't know what kind of questions or what kind of perspective you want to go into that. Um, well, I guess I was just going to ask, like, because for me, it seemed like for me, I grew up in like the city. So I grew up around lots of different types of races. And they always, to me, seemed to have different desires and vibes. And to me, they're totally different, but they're like equal and they all have their um but there seems to be this push that we're not that we're all equal and that we're not different. I'm just wondering if you have any like input as to why you think that's being sold to us. The equality thing is also a mind control program to separate us from um, activating the 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 maximum potential of our differences. There's a reason why we're different there's a reason and there's many reasons why um and to fall into that equality trap is to uh miss out on your own music the music of your past your present and your future uh the music of i mean the music of like if everybody was playing the same instrument in an orchestra, it would sound horrible. So there's a reason for all of this stuff. I don't know what it is. I just know that there's a reason and uh, that that um, those differences have been used to build certain people up, keep other people down. And since that system is being revealed for what it is, now the equality system is being moved in in order to have the same effect on people to maintain a particular uh, a particular level of consciousness based upon the level of consciousness that we are today. So back in like the six, not that long ago, it's basically yesterday, the sixties, fifties, forties, twenty people being burned, just, you know, lynched, dragged down the street legally. Like this is, this is legal. That stuff needs to be, and this was based upon race. So it's not about like how I feel about race. It's about what's actually been, how race has been used by the system itself to project some kind of perspective in this reality. A lot of people, you know, want to automatically jump into the equality thing. It's like, before we start putting all this stuff and, you know, answering all these questions, you have to do the homework on what's been going on. A lot of people just don't want to do that homework. So they create this prescription drug and then take this prescription drug every morning. It's like, oh, we're all equal. And then just over and every day, just doing the same thing over and over again. And there's people do that individually. And obviously the system is doing it on the macro, on the macro scale. So race is just another, it's another, it's not just another, it's, it's another one of these mechanisms that are used um, but it's also by the system using race the way it uses race, it also keeps us away from kind of like how heliocentrism keeps us away from nature, the graying out of race and the, the demonization of all this stuff. And then like how it's been used against us has the same effect on us. It's, it's way more complex then we're led to believe. And that's why I like this ancestry.com stuff that's out there. Like all this stuff, they, they know people are starting to ask these questions. So they have these prepositioned answers that are out there. 
um, that are, and this is going to be part of the new world order sort of kind of mentality that Oprah and all these people are kind of ushering in is this, we're all the same. So we need to just stop fighting. I was like, wait a second. Like it, that's it. That's all you have to say from, for what's been going on for the last however many hundreds and hundreds and thousands of years. That's all you have to say. Like that's obviously a program. So, so there's at least two things good that are going on. We have to, we have to, we have to Sorry, realize what the system is creating to, um, to protect itself. And we have to also inhabit and activate what is naturally uh, w what we are, like what's going on. And we have to take everything into account, the good and the bad. So we have certain people who have certain qualities and do certain things and not just only limited to race, but also, yes, race is also a part of that stuff. There's a science to this stuff. And a lot of people don't want to go into the science of that because it hurts too much. And once we get out of that butthurt sort of mentality, then we can start asking and answering the questions that will allow us to recognize acknowledge and activate the beauty of this um the, the the diversity that we are and also simultaneously hold hold um hold the system and hold each other accountable for what has happened what is happening and what's projected to be happening by the same system who did this created these mind control programs that were affecting us, you know, 10, 20, 30, 100 thousands years ago. So that's where I am in reference to the, the whole race storyline right there. And then you can get into the melanin and all that other stuff. But that's just like I said, that's all one part of that. Um, one part of the storyline It's not the storyline. But it's one part of it, how it's that, that was in reference to how it's been used against us. Um, Dr. Francis Crest Wilson, I don't know if you listen to any or read any of her books or information, but Dr. Francis Crest Wilson goes into that information. She breaks down uh, how the, 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 the program of race has been used to work against us uh, in the past and in the present. And so I, anytime that comes up, I have people start there and then come back and then ask some questions or then go into like, you know, now what are we thinking now? How are we seeing what's going on? The questions are gonna change once we start researching those kind of perspectives. Cause a lot of these questions have already been raised and answered in many ways from different, pers it's not, ha it hasn't been completely um, hashed out, but a lot of the information has been already presented to us. And some people are just ignoring it. They just want to just don't want to look at it. What what what's like the summary of what she says? Do you have um? Is it quick? Is it a, are you able to summarize it quickly? No, but okay. I can, I, I can explain um I, I, my, how I interpret like what um what she's talking about in in those two things that I was talking about like the the. Like who and what we are, the nature of existence. Race is part of this nature of existence. Boom. What is that? You can. We have to figure that out. We don't know what that is. It's mm -hmm. kind of like heliocentrism. It's just this theoretical bullshit that's been created for so long. That's one part. Another part that's equal to that part is how race has been used to build certain people up and bring other people down. And then it goes into her particular work goes into uh, the differences in people and relating to melanin. So melanated people in reference to if you have a black man and a, a white woman or a white woman and a black man to have a baby, you're going to have a brown baby or a black baby. So there's scientifically something going on there. And the system has used, has recognized this, the white supremacy system has recognized this and has used this um, uh, white supremacy race program to 
protect what they recognized scientifically that was working against us or uh, uh, against the, um, that system. I mean, she goes into way more details than I can even kind of try to break down. That's kind of like what I'm trying to figure out where to come from. But a lot of it, what it boils down to is the fear of white genetic annihilation uh, is one of the main reasons why uh, the white supremacy program was created and if you get stuck in that space then um things like white supremacy the ku klux klan genocide um conquering lands taking over everything will be done to protect that um that uh, reality from uh not becoming this is not becoming more out of hand to where people just literally become annihilated. So in order to protect your own annihilation, you have to annihilate everybody else. So that's kind of like some of the basic premise of where she's coming from uh, in, in a lot of her research. And there's a whole psychologist. She comes from a psychiatric perspective, uh, a background, and goes to the psychology of um, why this stuff has existed, why it's still existing, and how it's affecting affected us, and how it's affecting us now, and why it existed in the first place. Because those kinds of mind control programs were invented. It was a it was developed, um, and it, it was developed for a particular meaning and a particular purpose. So that's also part of our responsibility to figure out why that stuff exists. I don't know if I still sound like a robot. Do I still sound like a robot? Yeah, we can still hear you, though. Oh, that sucks. Well, I'm not sure I booted. I think he might have dropped off, but I think he'll jump back in. I don't know if his phone died or what. But I looked a little bit into her work, and I also studied psychology myself. I, I'm interested in some of the psychological explanations that she provides for, you know, like white people being threatened by blackness or whatever. But I'm also fascinated by like there's cultures where they treat that each other that way, you know, in a in a monoculture, like a the Japanese culture, mm -hmm. find a way to treat each other that way. So it's like harnessing that chaos you know it's a it, it does seem to be that you can find evidence where people even certain races more, more than others have have found some reason to harness this chaos to make it a part of their the way that they proceed through society taking advantage of chaos holding people down to their advantage mm -hmm. but why i mean what i just i'm still trying to get my head around the end goal like yes but your work you making that research available because i didn't know of a lot of people's work until i found it on your channel so that's really helped me expand my research into what's going on and where all this comes from so um, I'm yeah, grateful for that. People to, um, yeah, thank you for sharing that too. Yeah, the more people go into and realizing that, the more perspectives, the, everything will start to speed up. Everything will become more vibrant. Uh, everything will start to, it, 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 the change will be more, there'll be more depth to it. So um, even just like you acknowledging that right now is going to help some people who are gonna see this video and then be like, well, maybe I should look into it. I never really, cause it's a, a softer approach. Whereas, you know, you have, you know, people even to this day, if I even mention a lot of that information, it's like, nope, uh, no, nah, I'm not gonna listen. You're this and that. I'm like, all right, man, whatever, <laughs> that's cool. It's not gonna make this stuff go away. It's not, I mean, this is, you wanna talk about mind control, shit. You talk about everything else except that. That's what a lot of people are coming. You can talk about 
interdimensional pedophiles. You can talk about uh, yeah, archons and reptilians. You can talk about hey, Dave, you saw you mentioned white supremacy. Oh no, nope, they're stepping over the line, and uh, <laughs> it's it's not the whole story, but it's a big part of these stories. And like we were saying earlier, people, people get ca caught up in the comfort zones. And if we just keep allowing ourselves to get locked up in those comfort zones, and we're going to be limiting ourselves to a linear expansion or shifting of consciousness. And that's, that's the more of the same. That's what's been happening, keeping us from uh, shifting over the last times we started to acknowledge this information over and over and over again because we just latched on to one little thing and we said just like the civil rights act like oh well everything is fixed now because we have the civil rights act or we have our first so-called black president like every no you have to go from you have to come at these things from a 360 degree or at least mo uh, something between the linear and the 360 degree perspective but the, the 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 most effective mind control program is going to be based upon a linear a linear observation of reality a linear version of shifting a linear version of like oh it's only this but once you start addressing all of these stories and start incorporating how all of these stories are the same and they affect us the same way then that's when and you know things are really starting to change and i'm not saying that um without now i'm saying that from from realizing that within myself and like and realizing like how all of these mind control programs that are out there like the new age agenda the new age program and even like info wars and tyt the mainstream media they all have the same effect it's a linear storyline it's the 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 red versus the blue the hegelian dialectic is this the good guys versus the bad guys it's like wait a second like if you're focusing on that checker game you're not going to be able to see everything that's going on and race is a big part of it um how it's being used against us but people since people just don't they think they're enlightened and and woke and all this shit it's like oh you're i see that pretty much it's like at least once every two weeks somebody's gonna say oh you're, you're anytime i mention the race system somebody's talking about, oh well i stopped listening to your video because you're still hung up on the race thing you're just falling for the mainstream uh mind control programs of race and i'm unsubscribing i'm like you dramatic ass just leave like i don't need to hear all that shit. <laughs> just just go about your business like everybody else is going to be thinking differently but that is kind of like an example of what the mainstream media does every day. I mean, he's just like, nope, nothing's wrong. We're not, we're not gonna look at that. We're not gonna pay attention to this. We're not gonna pay attention to that. We're just gonna act like nothing exists and everything is just, you know, whatever. And we just need free energy and we need cryptocurrency and we need to stop the chemtrails and all this. It's like, okay, you go on ahead and be a superhero in your own world and. They need you to try to be a superhero. Think that you're a superhero. That's what the New Age uh, program and even Christianity and especially like Alex Jones and all the New Agers. And um, they need you to think like you're the superhero because they need you to think that you're fighting and winning something, but you're not really doing shit. You're just playing exactly the cards the way they've laid them for you. So until we start analyzing like why are we playing these cards like what, what game is this and why who put you in charge of these cards like what we, we don't ask those questions we just approach it like a checker game linearly one one move at a time this this system is hundreds of hundreds and thousands of moves ahead of us if we don't if we don't pay attention to it from that perspective then we're we're just going to be selling ourselves short again Yeah, that's why I'm trying to encourage people to do with this channel is to keep asking the deeper and deeper questions because, and that's what I've 
come across in my own research is the deeper I look, the deeper I have to keep looking. Mm -hmm. So that's just kind of where, I mean, you can't just stop in this journey, at least in my opinion. It feels like, you know, when I found Flat Earth, now I had a thousand more questions. And until I get satisfactory answers for everything, which I probably won't ever, I'm not going to stop. So it's kind of like, and I don't really, I can't get my head around people who choose to stop. Like I get the comfy, the need for the comfort of feeling like you have all the answers. But if, if you were woken up to the lies, I just, I can't see walk, walking away from, from the journey, just feeling like you found it all. There's so much more to understand, like why we're, so for instance, like you talked about the Bible earlier and how it's clearly and obviously been used as a mechanism of control. And then, you know, we look at the fact that we are all very different and race is one of the ways that we are. And that's been used against us. And like you just, all of these things that could be good or inspiring or beautiful are used against us. And and I got to know why, like what the benefit is. So, yeah. That's... At the same time, some people also get burnt out. They just basically burn out. And there's there's two ways to burn out. You can burn out publicly or you can burn out privately where, you, you know, publicly it's just like, well, um, people just stop they just or privately people just stop but publicly people stop within a comfort zone uh, some kind of movement so this, those are two kind of ways that you can burn out and um some people are doing that and don't know they don't know why they don't know what questions to ask some people are too are are really comfortable and it's okay i mean that's fine i mean but at the same time, you know, there's there's people are surrounded by people who are just constantly they were like, like I'm never gonna stop doing what I'm doing. Like this is part of my life. Like my life is part of, you know, my little cousins, my my uh, my goddaughter's life, my brothers, my sisters, my family members, my friends. My I, I have a responsibility to you. I have a responsibility to like everybody, the earth itself, and even just having a responsibility to nature, like protecting this place for the next seven generations. Well, if you take on that responsibility, then you also have to acknowledge that you have a responsibility to everybody that's a part of this existence at the same time. So if that's the case, then that's a hell of a thing to, to take on. And it's a hell of a thing to, you know, charge through in your reality and not many people some people are going to get over they're going to they're going to get to that to that plateau and they're going to look around and be like ah oh, man fuck this and they're going to just go back in or they're going to go back out which is just like oh yeah well, i've done it and, that, and they stay in that comfort zone you can either stay in a comfort zone and contract and implode and stay in that space and not go any further and be perfectly okay with that and there's nothing wrong with that or you're gonna you know lock yourself into a certain group or movement or whatever it is and there's nothing wrong with that i mean if it's available to do it and people are gonna do it then you know they need that they've chosen to do that i'm not gonna try to i don't want to take anybody's free will away i don't like, people are gonna do whatever it is that they're gonna do and like i said ultimately the most high um, interpretation of what's going on here is 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 far more complex than we can interpret right now, and that's where that's where that kind of bridge of those questions kind of hit that point to where it's just like, well, I I I don't know, I I, I don't know, and I'm not gonna say that I know. Uh, I'm just gonna you know share as you know, the, the highest perspective that I can. Um, and that's good enough for me.
All right. So you're back with us, Buddha. Hi. Hey, sorry. It kicked me out for some reason. I'm not sure what's up. Oh, you don't know why you got kicked out? No, it just said, like, you've been kicked out. I thought you might have done it. I'm just kidding. <laughs> well, I need, my voice sounds ridiculous, so I need you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's all good. It's all good. All right. Well, I'm really, really grateful to you for joining us. I'm going to try not to talk too much, though, because I'm probably ruining the show. No, it's fine. You ask, you ask good questions. It's all good. Um, I guess like uh, something I wanted to ask you, but I, cause I don't know, but I, I don't know if you're comfortable talking about it. It's like, what's your opinion of like people who are into like weed and mushrooms and DMT and all these, like, I don't know, spiritual shortcuts you could call them. Like, do you have an opinion of any of those things? I don't. I don't really call them spiritual shortcuts. More than spiritual stepping stones, and some people want to get, you know. I mean, it, it's a complex thing. I don't have anything against any of that stuff. I mean, they're all tools. That's what they are. They're tools, and over time, a tool can become a crutch, and that's where. It, just like I was talking about in reference to like the new age movement, like th they have, they have peaks, they have these ceilings to where you, a tool is designed to do a particular thing. Like cannabis is going to affect you a certain way and it's going to affect other people in different ways. There's a general thing, but individually it's, it's, it's more complex than that. And then you have the difference between cannabis and mushrooms and the difference between mushrooms and ayahuasca and ayahuasca and you know so there's these there's these things that exist for a purpose that you know i didn't make them exist they they were here naturally the cannabis and much like they affect us in a certain way so it's a tool of existence it's a tool within this creative existence and just like any tool, it could be used against you. It could be used for something else. And that's uh, obviously the system is using cannabis to promote how amazing uh, it is by trying to legalize it. And they're not going to go into the depths of why it was criminalized in the first place. It's another way to keep you away from that. Um, it's also going to keep people in the realm of limitation because since people are have been held back so long, they're, they're salivating for it now. And then now it's creating another movement. It's creating, and the same thing with, you can lump that into like all the, the different tools that are out there, but specifically they're like little, little boxes too at the same time. And I don't see anything wrong with these creative tools that exist. I do see something wrong with um, it becoming something that you need because that's when it shifts from a tool to a drug and it's just from it, it shit the, the energy of it changes because you hit that peak kind of like the new age you're like for me i hit that peak to where that was a tool for me and i was faced with either just accepting and like adjusting myself to fit the confines of that movement that group that little community and that that's why i see is counterproductive to our existence is when when we you know limit our own potential to something like a tool or a movement or somebody else's belief systems so that's what i was saying like in reference to like cannabis um ultimately it's my it's a it's a tool that is in the umpteenth degree of positivity and expansion and awareness and so on and so forth. But there are some things that are kind of counterproductive to it at the same time. Like personally for me, like when I share it, uh, share with people, um, the effect that it has on dreams and dreams are more natural to me than cannabis is because the natural nature of my dreams exists outside of this physical reality. Cannabis only exists in this physical reality. The effects can go into the non-physical reality, but the, 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 the realm of the dream 
is um, is much more important to me. And cannabis affects my dreams negatively to where I can't remember them. I can't connect with them. It's, it's harder. Not can't. I mean, but just like it stifles it and it's noticeable and I'm not the only one. So that when when you start to acknowledge a lot of these things that exist, then that's also it adds to the observation of like uh, it adds it adds like a deeper credibility, a deeper observation of like this is a tool and it's meant for something. And that's a reminder of that something of, of how uh, uh, it affects it stops you from your dreaming. And so you're either going to adjust to the, vib the, the, the vibration of the tool and then stay there or you're going to realize it uh, what it for being a tool and then uh, let it go in a sense of allowing yourself to expand beyond it, to not be limited to it. I don't see anything wrong with them though. Like ultimately like on the macro scale, they're, they're more positive than they are negative. That's why they're criminalized. Right, right. So, you, okay, so you, you mentioned um, dreams again there and you, and you kind of open with that. Do you have like, cause I, I've always been sort of fascinated with like the dream model, although like I don't seem to be someone who has a particular um, good track of remembering my dreams. Whereas other people seem to have always these like amazingly interesting dreams. So like, do you have, like, what do you think dreams are? What do you, do you think, like what's your whole concept of dreams and do you get a lot of knowledge from them and what's your like overall philosophy on what the purpose of these dreams is and what we're supposed to take out of it it's at least a place to get information mm -hmm. it's at least a place to connect with um a, a deeper interpretation of the non-physical essence of who and what you are that alone is enough but beyond that, um, like for me personally, I get a lot of inspiration from my dreams. Um, I like, I like uh, the absurdity of it sometimes, where it's just kind of like, what the hell does this even mean? Like sometimes it, you get, I don't even know what this means. Like it, and that's, right, right. it's perfectly fine. It's, it's that's it's good to have that, and then. Um, but at the same time, I've had really, really intense dreams with people that have passed. Uh, I've had people the intense dreams um, with um, people I don't even know. Where I've gotten messages, I've gotten uh, it, it. It allows it allows me, like myself, my own interpretation. It allows me to have a deeper, a deeper perspective on, on like my relationship to the observable reality so because when you're in a dream everything is kind of unstable because it's it's your subconscious is all over the place it's it's not it doesn't it's not really supposed to make any sense the the conscious reality is meant to make sense it's linear that's what this physical you know this reality this time is it, that's how we make sense where where the subconscious is kind of like art uh, and music it doesn't make sense but when you hear the whole song or you read the whole book that's when it makes sense but dreams are and dreams are like that in a sense too and we have them every single night uh, in every single moment but when you allow yourself to rest then you can have a deeper uh, uh, I wouldn't even say deeper because it's we're, we're still there too. It's a deeper in reference to this perspective, like this fit, this me perspective, but you have uh, more of an ability to bring the information from, from that part of yourself back to the conscious reality and do something with it. That's another like um, part of this reality that exists that a lot of the times we just kind of just, don't even pay attention we don't even really care uh, because we're trained to um, condition to think and act that way because the, in relation to the same reasons why we're conditioned uh, to believe that the indigenous people 
were primitives and savages and that were conditioned to believe that um, there's no kind of uh, spiritual essence to who and what we are. We're conditioned to believe that um, we, we're, we're nothing. We're just, you know, cosmic dust that was shot out of the Big Bang and evolved from dinosaurs to monkeys to, you know, what we are today because gravity sucked everything together and made a earth globe and made dinosaurs all this bullshit is just nothing 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 but you can find more i find more reality i find more um deeper interpretations of of this experience from one dream than every single uh, theory that comes from the university system and that alone is enough to be um, studying and asking questions about because uh it, it's it's happening every single moment of this experience and we can actually tune in and view the movie from conscious eyeballs once we start to make that relationship deeper and once you and, and you're really just becoming deeper uh, deep more deeply connected with yourself and when the, when you have an opportunity to become more deeply connected with yourself I mean that's win win so that's i guess that's kind of like a basic rundown i mean there's so much more in reference to dreams uh, but that's a basic rundown of how i see like what how dreams are affecting us and why they exist at all and you know what we could do to you know utilize that in this reality do you think that you may be like you do you think that everyone cuz i don't particularly have I mean, maybe I'm just not looking at my dreams in a, um, like, analytical way. I'm just sort of seeing it as, like, they're just kind of basic, like, I'll go to the store and, you know, buy a coffee. And they're just, they seem blank to me. But is it just because I'm not analyzing them? Like, do you think that you found a way to analyze them? Or do you think that your dreams have, like, well, you like you said, like you have, spoken with people that have passed before so like do you think that that experience is rare or do you think that a lot of people have that and just choose not to you know explore it like I guess what I'm asking is do you think that this could be like um, a particular gift that was given to you and it's something that you yourself are um, inclined to talk about or do you think that this is something that everyone has and they just haven't developed it or figured out a way to analyze it properly i think one of the main parts is that we get conditioned out of it from childhood um um because like you you see a lot of kids kids are the ones who are subjected to nightmares mostly uh mm -hmm. kids are heavy duty dreamers and it's once we get sucked into this version of reality uh, and not to mention the conditioning that comes along with this version of reality, just the physical reality locking you into telling you that you're a body and you don't even have a soul. You're not a soul. You're just a bunch of chemical neurons firing off. Like every condition that comes from this mind control program is separating you further and further away from your dreams. And it happens when you're children, like when you're a kid. So uh, I don't think it, it, before it goes down to the individual having a gift or whatever the ability or whatever we have to first acknowledge the conscious effort to keep people away from going into those depths just just the same way that uh, psychedelics and cannabis are criminalized well basically dreams are criminalized when you you realize the potential of that and that criminal program was initiated when you first got here, when the doctor slapped you on your ass, when Western civilization demonized the indigenous interpretations of this reality, when um, our soul was conditioned out of our conscious interpretations of who and what we are. That's all part of you know our relationships to dreams. So before it even gets to like, how like somebody like like you were saying you don't dream as much or somebody doesn't dream as much or whatever in comparison to somebody who does dream uh, on a regular basis. 
it doesn't it doesn't really make sense to like try to mathematically figure out that from a grown up perspective first before that exists we have to acknowledge the conscious effort that is attacking us as children and um once that's known then that kind of shifts everything and then you'll realize that we all have this potential we have this capability it's just how how much have we been conditioned out of it and um what are we like what are we going to do about it and um over time like does it even matter like maybe somebody has chosen to not do that and that's perfect i mean overall obviously like you, you get you're going to process and shift things or not it's up to you um but in reference to dreams it's it's not as simple as just like oh this person and that person no there's a conscious effort to attack your dreams and your relationship to the non-physical reality and the dreams are very much a part of that yeah all right cool um Biggs, do you have anything to comment on dreams i know you spoke of dreams before no no i don't and i don't want to talk too much in case my microphone is ruining the whole show <laughs> so. okay but this has been a really good conversation yeah thank you again for having me on and being so oh thank you for coming on and talking to us your show has been really inspirational for me it's helped me think about things in a totally different way and i'm so grateful to have found you yeah, I feel the same way, man. I really, um, I really value channels like yours and the way that you approach things. So it's a, a blessing for you to come on. So I really appreciate it. Happy to be of service. Truly. Awesome. Well, on that note, then, I think we'll end it there and let you get out of here. Thanks again. And it was great talking to you. Yeah. Yes, take it easy. Thank you for holding space, and um, we'll talk again sometime. All right. That'd be great. For All sure. Right. Look forward to it. All right. Take care. Okay. See y'all later. Right, bye. Are you going to stay on, girl? No, I'm going to... Oh, oh, yeah. Your voice, your voice is all messed up. I forgot. Yeah, I'm probably ruining it. Um, all right. Well, that was um, that was awesome, though. Thanks for hosting us. Yeah, thanks for being on. All right, I'll talk to you soon. Take care. Okay. All right. Bye. Bye.